Here is a quick tutorial on transformations of um, functions. And right now we're going to be talking about um, transformations of, or rigid transformations of vertical and horizontal. So that's going to be a first part. When you have a transformation, the key thing when you're talking about any transformation is some quick questions you want to ask yourself. How does a transformation affect the ordered pair? Because every function is made up of points. They have inputs, which affect the x, and outputs, which affect your y values, traditionally your y values. Once you identify what the transformation affects in your ordered pair, and since a transformation shifts or moves points, it's important to know how they affect that. Um, specifically, is it affecting the x value, or is it affecting the y value when you're talking about the different transformations. So first off, we're going to talk about what's known as a vertical shift. Now this is what's known as a rigid transformation. All right, It's rigid It's a rigid transformation because it moves, it does not change the values of the points, it just moves the function. It moves the values to the right or left or up or down. Now vertical shifts Move the values up and down. Okay. Now, with this, when you have y equals f of x plus d, all right, the d stands for that you are adding d units to f of x. That means you are changing the y values by d. So when you add d to them, you're moving the values up. When you have f of x minus d, that means you are taking all the f of x values, which are the y's, and you're subtracting d units. So that means you're moving them down d values. Well, let's check this out. All right, to sh demonstrate how this works, I have a graph over here. Okay, standing right over here, you have a graph of f of x. Okay, and we're going to take this ordered pair of points. We have four points. Okay, four points. And in these points, we have our x values, and we have our y values. And what we're going to do is that we're going to I'm going to demonstrate how these values change. So first off. When you have y equals f of x plus 2, you have to think about, all right, well, we're taking values and plugging them in. Well, since we only have values in this particular graph of four distinct points, there's really only four inputs that I essentially can use. So first off, I'm going to take my 0, and that's my beginning value, and I'm going to plug it into the function. So when I plug in 0, I substitute that in, and I get f of 0. f of 0 happens to be negative 1. Well, negative 1 plus 2, because now I'm adding 2 to it in my function, and that's going to give me positive 1. So I'm going to plot this point 0, positive 1. 0, positive 1. The next one I'm going to have is I'm going to plug in 1. I get out 0. I'm going to add 2 to it, so that gives me 2. And I'm going to move up some spots right here. The next one we have is 3. I'm going to plug in 3. When I get 3, I get 1 as an output. But I'm going to add 2 to that, so I have 3. So I have two, and then I'm going to have to move my graph up a little bit. We have three right here. And then the last one I have is four, and then two. Look at four, I get two plus, I add two, so I have equal to four. All right, and that's going to be somewhere up here, which you can't really see. So when I add these together, all right, I have this graph. Notice how the graph, even though my graph is really horrible, and then it just simply shifts up all the values up two units. Now, doing the same thing, you realize that, well, in this one, I have negative 1. That means for every value I plug into x, x doesn't change. So 0, 1, 3, and 4. That means I'm going to plug in my values. I get my outputs, but now I'm subtracting 1 each time. Which essentially means that I'm shifting everything down 1. So negative 1 is going to be negative 2. Um, instead of 0, I'm going to have negative 1. Instead of 1 right here, I'm going to have 0. And then instead of 2, I'm going to have essentially 1. So at these different values, I now take my new points, and I can see that each point has just simply been shifted down one unit from its previous value. Connect the dots, blah, blah, blah. And what I have right there is a vertical rigid transformation down 1. Now, the same thing can be said when you're talking about horizontal transformations. All right, horizontal rigid transformation, once again, move values to the right or left. Now, the thing is, is that when you have x minus c, 
the values are inside the inputs. When you have C, you actually are moving things to the right of C. When you're adding C to X, you're actually moving values to the left of C. Now, I think of... When I hear these different values, when you're moving things to the right and left, I call this kind of bizarro change because it doesn't really seem natural. It seems like it's the opposite of what it should be. Like when you added 5 to the outside of a vertical transformation, move things up, subtract it from f of x, move things down. But inside, actually, you're moving you know, to the opposite. You're subtracting, you move to the right, you add, you move to the left. That doesn't seem appropriate. All right? It seems a little bizarre. Well, let's think about this. In order to figure this out, honestly, our y values are all staying the same from our original points. The thing is, is that I have to figure out what can I plug into x in order to get the out these outputs. So let's think about this. If I input a 0, I get out a negative 1. Well, here, if I input a 0, I actually don't end up with 0. I actually end up with the input of negative 3. Well, negative 3, I look at my chart of values I know, I don't have a value for negative 3. So what do I do? Well, I only can input values I have. So the question is, I have to think about, okay, what value can I plug in for x that will give me an, out, or an input of 0? Well, the answer is, if I plug in 3, I have 3 minus 3, which gives me 0, which I need, and then my output will equal negative 1. Okay. Well, I do the same thing for the other ones. For 0, I look at 1. Well, what can I plug in for x that gives me 1? Well, obviously 4. What can I plug in for x to give me 3? Well, that would obviously be um, 5. Not 5, 6. <laughs> Sorry. If I, can I plug in for x that obviously give me 4? And that answer would be 7. So over here, and I ran out of room on my graph, but when you have this, we can actually plot this graph. And you can see, okay, I'm going to go over to 3. I'm going to have negative 1. I'm going to have 4, 0. I'm going to have 6, 1. So I can add some spots for here. It's 1. And then I have 7, 2. And as I graph this, you can see that actually... I shifted my graph over to the right three units, just like we said we would do all right, when we subtract values from x. And that's the reason why, because you have to add additional units to get back to the original that you started with. It all depends on the original function. When you do the same thing, you have y equals f of x plus 2. Well, to do this, we go through the same thing. I only have a certain amount of sets of outputs that I need. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Well, what values can I plug in to get to these values? Well, I need 0. What can I plug in for x to get me 0? Well, the answer is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. What can I plug in for x to give me 1? Well, negative 1. What can I plug in for x to give me 3? Well, I'm plugging for 3. I need to have positive 1. All right, what do I need to plug in for x to give me 4? My answer would be 2. So now I have my new sets of points. When I plug in negative 2, I get 0, which when I plug it in, I get negative 1. And so from here, I can see that, all right, I have negative 2, negative 1. I have negative 1, 0. I have 1, 1. And then I have 2, 2. And as I connect these dots what I have is now a horizontal rigid transformation to the left two units. So in summary, when you want to have a rigid transformation vertical, you're adding or subtracting values to the y values. That moves values up and down. To move a rigid transformation right or left horizontally, you are actually going to subtract or add values to the x values or the inputs. We will talk more about transformations in our next video.